Courtney Brickner with The Crafty Brick. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a repost of a live I did over on Instagram where I did sublimation tie-dye. I made this shirt, it turned out so great. Here's a picture of the back. It was really fun. So I'm gonna show you all the steps that I did in order to make this. So remember, if you like what you see on this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss anything crafty. Stay tuned. Hello. It is Courtney with the Crafty Brick, and we are going live. It's Crafty Tuesday again. Welcome back. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. It's been kind of crazy around here. Um, I don't know if you've been watching my stories for going through construction, so it's a little hectic, but here I am. I'm going to not think about construction for a little bit, and we're going to make something tonight. So I saw, let me turn this light off. Angie over at Country Chic Cottage did some sublimation with, no, tie-dye with sublimation and it was so cool. So that's what we're trying tonight. So welcome, welcome. That's what we're making. Let's see, I've already gotten a question and already answered it. I'm off to a good start. Hopefully, the project is going to go as smoothly as Angie's did because hers was really cute and that's what I'm hoping for tonight as well. So, did you guys have a nice fourth? We did, ours was pretty low key. We went over to a friend's house to go swimming and that was about it. And then we came back and took a nap. <laughs> uh, we didn't even go see fireworks. Normally we've got fireworks in our neighborhood, but they were canceled this year because some the field that they were supposed to be taking place in um, is under construction. So we got no fireworks. Normally we sit outside on our roof and watch it. And now that we've got the construction, it would have been perfect because the roof is completely open and we would have been sitting out there watching, but we didn't get to do that. So did you guys watch any fireworks or anybody here for the first time for Crafty Tuesday? This, If you are here for the first time, Basically, Crafty Tuesday is me making something that I have not made in the past, most of the time. Sometimes I've made it, but usually I have not made it, so I'm testing it out live to see how it goes. Sometimes it works out great, sometimes not so great, but basically the whole point of it is to show you just kind of the other side of crafting that's not so insta-perfect. While all the things that are already done and people have done videos of them, Crafty Tuesday is a chance for me to test out some things and see if they work and show you that you can try new things and maybe they work, maybe they don't, and hopefully bring out some creativity in you as well to try things that you've been wanting to try. Um, I get DMs from people telling me ideas that they think I should try for Crafty Tuesday, and this actually was one. I, I saw Angie's video at, at Country Chic Cottage, and then somebody also sent me another video of somebody doing sublimation tie-dye. So I'm doing it because it seems like something fun to do. So how about we get started? I need my scissors. So I'm very anxious to try this tonight. Hers turned out really cute, like I said, and I want mine to turn out cute as well. So I've got my shirt here. This is the shirt I'm gonna be using today. It is, um, I think it's 94% cotton. Yeah, 94% cotton. So high poly, or I didn't mean cotton. I meant poly. High poly count. So it's going to be good for sublimation. And I'm going to turn my easy press. Normally I'm using my regular heat press, but tonight um, I thought I would just try and use my easy press and see how that works out. So I've got that time and temp set. And what we're gonna do is I've got my design here, rays and shades. I'm gonna put that on the shirt. And I've also got, so the, the lines that are in the sunglasses, I'm using those same lines and I've printed out four sheets of paper with just that design. So when Angie did it, she used like a watercolor, but that's not what I'm doing tonight. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see how this works. But if it doesn't work, I also print it out. Where did I print it out? I have another shirt that I can try, and I know. Oh, printed out this. It's like a more watercolor type, and so we'll see if that works out better. 
But for now, what I'm gonna do, let's bring my camera down just a bit so you can see the actual table. And let me move my table back a bit because I have a rolling table. It's so perfect, love it. And to protect my little pressing pad here, let's put some parchment paper on there. Let's put parchment paper so that we do not get any sublimation ink on our pressing pad. Okay, so that's all covered. I did it one time where I didn't cover my my pad with butcher paper. This, this time, today I'm using parchment paper. I ran out of butcher paper, so we got to improvise. But I got the design that I was working on. I got it all over my um, my pressing pillow. Oh my goodness! I'm trying to turn this so that I'm not crooked. Hello, ladies, scrap chick, Texas. Happy that you're here. All right, so what Angie did, let's see what, what the plan is. So I've got my shirt here and I'm gonna take the design that I'm doing and I'm just gonna put it in the general area of where I plan to press it. And I don't really want the tie dye to be all over that area. So I'm just gonna scrunch right here and right here and then also down from the neck and up this way so that my design has a little white spot that I'm going to be pressing on. So I've got that there. I'm gonna flip it over and take that area and tape it around. I love the shelf with the crickets. Thank you, I do too. I know you guys saw that I had the crickets. Normally I've got them over on that side of my craft space and they were on a roll, they were stacked like that, but they were on a rolling out shelf so I could use them on the shelf. And that was very convenient, but I've gotten a few more supplies and I was running out of space over in that area. So I thought now that I've got my table away from that shelf area and it rolls out in the middle, maybe I'll put a shelf there. The crickets can go there, but I have, a plan, it actually is working very well, a plan of um, how to use the crickets um, on that shelf so that it's really convenient and not annoying to move them. Forgot it was Tuesday, what are we doing today? We are doing sublimation tie-dye. I know I got thrown off because of the holiday, so I thought today was Monday for a very long time today, but it's not, it's Tuesday. So here we are. I've got the back of my shirt tied like so, so that that part is not going to have any tie-dye on it and then my design will fit on there. So then I've got the rest of my shirt here. I'm excited and nervous about this at the same time. So I'm just going to kind of ball, kind of fold it up so that we're in a, working with a small space, okay? And I'm gonna take this tag out. I don't want that tag in there because sometimes that tag turns things black and I don't want that. So I've got my shirt. I've ruffled it all or folded it all in. It's kind of like a accordion style, the way that I've folded it in together. We tie-dyed shirts with the kids this weekend. That's fun. So the kind of upside of this tie-dye is there's no tie-dye miss. That's why I'm excited to try it. So here's what I've got. I've got this paper, sublimation paper, and I've got my shirt. It's all balled up. Let me give you a closer look at that shirt. So you see it's all balled up, kind of folded accordion style towards the middle. Okay. Then what we're going to do is take my lines here that I've got. This is my little, where the tie dye part is going to be. And I want to make sure that the whole shirt is covered with this. And I'm, I've got two for the front and then I'm going to have two for the back. Okay. That's, that's the plan. That's my plan. I'm gonna tape these in the middle because I would like them to stay together. 
And then I'm gonna tape this down on the sides so this paper will stay in place. Can't wait to see what this looks like. I hope it turns out cute. I'm making sure that all of my paper is covering the shirt. And I'll show y'all what it looks like after, after I cover it all, just in case you can't see. Just in case, let's tape all this down all the way around. I'm taping this so that the paper is gonna stay in place and it's not gonna move where I don't want it. I'm taping all around the shirt. Oh my gosh. I'm always nervous about how these projects are gonna turn out. Okay, I've got tape all around. Let's tilt the camera down. Here we go. Tape all around the shirt. You don't see, let me see a teeny bit. You don't see much shirt outside of the tape. And then what I need is parchment paper for the top to cover so that I don't get um, ink, sublimation ink on my press. So I'm gonna cover the top here. And then let's see what we get. I've got my heat press set to 400 and I'm doing 40 seconds. So let's do that. We're gonna do it in two sections. So here's our first section, pressing it down. I'm a little concerned about that back because I taped the back, so it's definitely not getting the same amount of pressure, but I feel like with the tie-dye, it doesn't have to be as precise um, as if you were doing a regular um, sublimation press because we're doing tie-dye, so tie-dye is not perfect. So it's the look we're going for. Oh my gosh, I hope it works. I really, really do. So we got nine seconds on this section. I'm pressing the top first, and then I'm gonna move it down to the bottom half. All right, that one's done. Let's move it down here. See what we get. We got, I'm doing 40 seconds, 400 degrees. I see the ink through the paper, so I mean, it's pressing. We'll see how it presses on the shirt and see how that looks. All right, 20 seconds. I don't know, have any of you done this sublimation tie-dye in the past? This is my first time doing it. But it's a much neater way to do tie-dye because you don't have all that ink getting all over your hands, getting all over everything. So I think it'll be fun to see how it works. Three seconds, let's see. Tie-dye sublimation. That's what we're doing today. All right, take our paper off. I don't see any ink on it. All right, and let's take this off. Ooh, fun, fun, fun in the sun. Let's see, so this is what it looks like right here. I haven't even opened it yet. So let's open it and see what we get there. Oh my gosh. Let's take our tape off of the back. Where's my end? I don't want to cut it. I don't really want to cut it. There's got to be an end here. All right, there's a spot I can cut. My luck, I would cut the shirt, so I'm going to be very, very careful and not cut the shirt. Okay, there's the tape. Let's see what the front looks like. I like it. And we have a little spot to put our design. So let's flip it over and do the back because we want it on both sides. I'm excited. But I'm gonna take this off because there's ink on this already. So I don't really want that ink on there. So I'm gonna use some more parchment paper and put that down on this side. I think we got a winner here this week, guys. I think. I think we do. I'm excited. So we're doing sublimation tie-dye. I'm gonna put this on my little mat here. So with the doing the back, we're not gonna have to um, 
do the scrunching up because we're, we don't have a design on the back. So, I mean, we do have to do the scrunching up. We don't have to do the ball to leave the white part in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my shirt. We're just gonna bunch it up. Bunch it up into a little space that will fit this paper. I wasn't sure how these lines were gonna work out, but I think they're working out just fine. All right, so we've got it balled up here. I think that looks good. I got the shirt or the sleeves balled up. Everything's balled up. Tilt it in just so you can see. This is what it looks like. Alrighty. Now I've got two other sheets of paper that I already printed. And I'm going to set it on top right here and then set this one on top. Oh, I'm really excited about this. It's looking very cute so far. All right, and then we're gonna tape these pieces of paper together. And we're also going to tape around it so that the shirt is covered with all the paper. Okie dokie. I wasn't sure that this tape was gonna stick to this parchment paper, but it is. Good stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm happy you guys are here to try this out with me. Tie-dye that's not messy. I seriously have to admit that I've never done tie-dye. <laughs> I'm not like really huge into messes and I don't, I just, I'm not a fan. No, I guess I should be. I shouldn't care about mess because I'm a crafter, but I just prefer not having a mess. So I've never done it. But when I saw Angie doing this, a no mess sublimation tie-dye, I'm on board. I can hang with that. That's my kind of tie-dye. Okay, so we are doing the back now. We are doing sublimation tie-dye. Where, okay, got some more parchment paper that I'm going to put on the back of this to protect my press. Here we go. Putting the, covering my shirt that has my sublimation paper on it. And now we've got 400 degrees. 40 seconds, we're gonna do the top half, and then we will do the bottom half. It's a great idea. I am so excited about trying this out. So far, so good, I think it looks really cute. And then when we put our design on the front, I think that's gonna be fire! I don't know, what do you guys think? Are you gonna try this? Actually, I guess you should wait and see how it turns out, and then you can tell me if you're gonna try it because the jury's still out on whether it works, but I'm optimistic, I really am. Okay, we got 10 seconds, and then we're gonna move it to the bottom because we're doing two sheets of paper so that it covers the entire shirt. All right, done with the top. Let's move to the bottom. And I see the colors through it. You know, I really was not sure how the, this was gonna work with, let me show you this. With the lines, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know, but I think it's gonna be good. I wanna try it, you totally should try it. And if you guys try it, tag me, because I really wanna see it. I love to see things that you guys make. And I, I'm, I get pictures a lot of people making things they tried out, things that they were inspired from one of my uh, videos. So I love getting them, so please DM me and show me. Okay. This one's done. Let's see what we got here. Remove our tape. This color, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. So I already moved it, but I do want to show you guys what it looks like before I even take it apart. Is it 400, 400 degrees for 40 seconds? Okay, so here's the back. I think that's fun. So now what we've got going on, this one, let's see, let me use this one because there's no ink on it. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna use a new one. 
I've had too many times where I messed up and got ink on my shirts that were finished being made and then I messed around and used the same sheet of paper and got ink on it. So I try to not ever reuse paper because sometimes there's ink on there that you can't see. And nothing makes me madder than a project that I finished and then I mess it up. Super irritating. So I'm gonna advise use new paper. That's that's my advice. Learning from my mistakes. Okay, so now we've got the front, and because we full, what we did at first was to ball up this area and tie it in the back. That was so that we've got a white space right here to put our design on, and we are ready to add our design. I am going to take a piece of parchment paper and put it in between my shirts because you should always put um, parchment paper or, or butcher paper. I'm just out of butcher paper today, so I'm improvising. And parchment paper works. It does the trick. But you want to make sure that you've got something in between your shirt because the ink will bleed onto the back of your shirt and then your design's going to be on the front and the back and you're going to be mad. And then you're going to be like, Courtney didn't tell me to do that, but I did. You just didn't listen. Okay? <laughs> I'm not taking blame for you getting ink on the back of your shirt. I'm just not. Let's see. Can you turn it around? Love it. And the colors are popping. They are. I will turn it around. Let me do the design on the front first. And then I will turn it around so y'all can see how it all looks together. All right. So let's go ahead and put my design on here. I'm going to tape it on. And normally, I don't use tape. Normally I'm using spray, but today we're using tape and we're gonna roll with that. I'm doing things a little bit differently today. I'm not using my big press. I'm not using my butcher paper. I'm not using my spray. I'm just kind of winging it today, okay? But I think it's gonna work. I mean, a lot of people use tape anyway for their shirts, so I think it's gonna be fine. I did not forget my, my paper on the inside, so that's good. All right, now, I need one more piece of paper. Oh, I'm not, this is the last of the roll, perfect. Paper to put on top. This is the last thing, we're putting our design on top here. Let's press that, 400 degrees, 40 seconds. This is making me nervous because it's moving. This parchment paper is very slippery, so my press was like moving a little bit when I put it on movement and sublimation are not friends the tape should prevent it from sliding but the reason i stopped using tape in the first place was because i felt like i was getting ghosting more often and um, it was because my paper was accidentally accidentally moving when i put the press down so that's why you spray instead but that's beside the point that it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay right it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine, everything's fine. Yes, you guys! Look at this. Let me remove my paper on the inside. You guys, rays and shades. We've got a tie-dye shirt, front and back. Amazing, I am happy. And the reason why I wanted like I wasn't sure if these, this paper with the lines was going to work because it's just lines like that. But I knew that the inside of my sunglasses had, it was those lines and it was that paper. So that's why I really wanted to use this paper because I knew the colors were going to match exactly. I think it looks totally fine with lines. So you can see like here, there are lines on it. But I don't think it's a problem. I think it's really cute. And it, I, I mean, there's lines down here, but you know, I think, I think it works. I think it works. There's lines in the sunglasses, so it all works. You guys, look, we made sublimation tie-dye shirts. I am so excited. I'm so happy you guys are here with me to try this out. So this design, the rays and shades, this is something that I designed, so you can purchase that on my website. Um, 
and I'll give you the information of that. And then this, this pattern is so cute. I am so good. Looks like palm leaves. They do. So it's total summer. You guys, I'm so, so excited. It works. Looks like part of it. It does. I think it works great. We did it. We did it. We tested it out. Um, I love it. Thank you so, so much. So I don't know if you guys want to see this, but so I had the lines on there. Other design, other things that I've seen, like if they're, if you're doing the sublimation tie dye, um, I love when stuff goes as planned too. I am a fan of things that go according to plan. Where is the other one? Oh, so this one was a more continuous pattern. It, it printed out really light, but this is also a blue. Um, I have another shirt, so I don't know. Do you guys want to see what it looks like without, like, cause I thought showing you the lines would be really helpful because that's something super easy that you can design just in silhouette or, um, or Cricut. You could just make a bunch of rectangles together and then change the color of those rectangles and then you end up having this. So, well, each individual page. So if you have a design that you want and you already have the colors that you want, I thought it would be really easy if you get the colors from your design, do a bunch of rectangles just like this, just one on top of the other. You could have the line or you could not have the line, but you would have the colors in your design and that's what it would look like. So that's really also why I wanted to show you this because this is a pattern that you can do really, really easily on your machine. And then you just make it um, so that's eight and a half by 11 sheet paper. You've got a bunch of rectangles all together. The colors match what you are trying to do. So then your initial design right here will be in the middle and then all the tie-dye colors are gonna match your design because you made it. So there's that. But what some of the other things that I've seen use like a more watercolor pattern so i would like to see what it looks like with the watercolor instead of just the lines so if you guys want to stick around i thought i would do that also i do oh that's press and seal that is not what i want where i ordered oh you know what i have more i have butch paper i ordered it let me get it let me get it i did get a, a roll of butcher paper i forgot I forgot it came, I just never took it out. So if you guys wanna stick around, I'm gonna do it again and see what it looks like with the watercolor as opposed to just the lines. But the lines I think are really perfect because you can do that yourself. Watercolor, I find, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know how to make watercolor. I purchased watercolor from, um, where do I get it, from Creative Fabrica. Can get it from there i've gotten some from etsy before i'm sure it's super easy i just i haven't done it but let's do this i have one more shirt i thought i might show you so i've got a v-neck shirt um so if you want to stick around check it out are you putting that on sublimation paper yes it is printed on sublimation paper i use my um sawgrass printer and printed it so let's start from the beginning if you were not here at the beginning I'm gonna do these same steps again um, and do it with a different shirt this time I'm going to use watercolor and see how that works out let's see um, so what am I doing oh I'm gonna see where my design goes a little bit make it a little bit smaller this is a v-neck and it's a smaller shirt so I'm just making my design a little bit smaller so I'm just placing it on to see where my design will go and then I'm gonna take the shirt and ball up that area around it so that that front of the shirt stays white so I'm gonna ball up there a little bit below a little bit a little bit above a little bit below and then I'm gonna take it by the back and tape that section around okay because I don't want the tie-dye 
to be on that section. So that's why I'm doing that. Oh, that's a little funny. <laughs> um, I think I don't want that. Let me do that again. It kind of shipped it off to the side a bit. I don't want it off to the side. I want it in the middle. So let's try that again. There's the middle. <laughs> I do want it in the middle, not off to the side. Okay. That seems better. Let's put the tape around there. This is so, so cool. Tie dye, that's not messy. I am a fan. Okay, now that's in the middle. So this is what it looks like in the front. This is what it looks like in the back. So then what I do is take the rest of my shirt and I'm balling it, not balling it up. I'm kind of ruffling, kind of fanning it together. But I want all of the pieces kind of folded up. All right, and then I will put this paper on here that I've already printed out. So I already prepared these parts. So you, so I didn't, ha I didn't want to waste time printing stuff out. I don't like to waste your time. I just want to get to crafting when you join me. I hope you like that. I guess someday I, if you guys want to see like the full process of stuff, I can do that also. But I feel like you might know how to do some of the stuff, so I don't want to waste your time like cutting and using the machine. I just want to get down to business of making stuff and showing y'all how stuff works. Uh-oh, I wanted those two pieces to be together. Okay, and let's finish taping this. So I'm taping all along and we're trying to see what it looks like with more of a watercolor picture. Scissors. Scissors are always missing. Okay, so we're going to cover that up. Here we go, 400 degrees, 40 seconds. Let's see what this watercolor looks like. Now, when I printed it out, the color didn't even look totally right to me. And that, that's typical of sublimation prints. They don't, they print out lighter than um, when you, when they come exposed to the heat, that's when their color pops. But this one looked even lighter than usual. So we're going to check that out too. Because I don't, I don't know if this blue is really blue. But it looked blue in the thing online. So if you're just joining, we're doing sublimation tie-dye. This is the shirt that we made previously. And I'm working on another style right now. So that just finished. Now let's do the bottom half. I'm doing 400 degrees, 40 seconds. But look at this. Look at this. I think I might wear this tomorrow. Super cute. Rays and shades. There's the front. There's the back. A little tie dye without the mess. Um, and 40 seconds here. We're using our easy press. And it's going well. Let's see what this one looks like. That one had lines. This one is going to be watercolor. That looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Okay. Let's see how this one turns out. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Let's take this paper off. Let's see if it's really blue. It is blue. It's blue. It's much more faded than our other one. But. It is, it is tie-dye. I don't know, I don't even, I mean, it, it, it looks very similar. It looks very similar. So let's do the back. I'm gonna get a new piece of paper just because there's already ink on that paper. And we'll compare the two and see how they look. Let's get this. On the inside balled up so you lay it out flat and then you kind of fan it all so that it comes into a little piece so that both the papers fit on it okay that's fanned out nicely I think 
make sure that it's not sitting on my what do you call it on my thing you know what that paper is not covered all the way I'm gonna get paper on my or ink on my what do you call it ink on my pressing pillow and then I'm not gonna be happy last week I got ink on myself what was I making last week I don't even remember but I remember I got something on me and it didn't come off not thrilled about that still not thrilled about, thrilled about it <laughs> okay here we go here make sure the sleeves are fanned up together then we get our paper on and then we take is the shirt material polyester yes it is these are 94 percent polyester shirts the higher polyester the better quality prints you have and really the uh, the better your shirt lasts because if you're doing it on cotton it's it's gonna wash out so sublimation is not suggested for cotton things only polyester all right let me get one more sheet of paper to cover this thing scissors And here we go. Let's see. Now, where did you get the shirts? These shirts are from EG Pro. Um, like Edward George Pro. Um, I got them online. I'm not certain if you have to have a wholesale account to purchase them. But that's where they're from. But um, Cricut shirts are really good. I like their shirts a lot, actually. And Joann's has them on sale a lot, so I would try those. Those are 90, what cotton are those? 90, maybe 95 or 6%, not cotton, I keep saying cotton, polyester. And then a little bit of spandex, so they're really soft. All right, and let's do another 40 seconds down here. Let's see what questions I've missed. Have I missed any questions? Oops. You printing that on sublimation paper? Yes. Oh, I answered the shirt. Stuff going as planned. Yes, yes, yes. Today, I think it was as planned. Oh, you used them too. I love their shirts. They their um baseball tees, I think are the best. They're super soft. And um what are they? They have lots of colors, tons of colors of the baseball tees. They've got the white front and the gray front ones. So I like those. Okay, friends, this one, this one is good. It's just not as bright as the other one. I'll show them both together, but it's cool. It's very cool. Lots of um, tie-dye on the back make a big enough sheet to cover this whole thing now and then we're gonna do our design on the front so let's just add the design here on the front and then this shirt will be finished where is my design for the front oh here it is here it is all right we're gonna tape that down and we'll press that and then this shirt will be finished enough to cover where my press is going to sit. Is that covering? No, I didn't cut it big enough. Let's make a little bit larger. Okay, just a little bit bigger. I don't want ink on my press. Okay, here's our last step. I finally found you. <laughs> Have you never been to Crafty Tuesday? You see it afterwards? I'm so excited you stopped by. Um, how do you feel about Gildan shirts? For sublimation, I have not found any Gildan shirts that are high poly that you can sublimate on. So I, I don't know. You can't sublimate on the ones like from Michaels, those high, high, high cotton ones. 
or the tri-blend ones, those just don't work very well. So if you're sublimating, I would say no for Gildan. That's what I would say. It's cute, cute, okay. It's cute. I feel, I feel like there's not a huge difference between the um, um, the watercolor and then the line. So I say go with the lines because that's going to match your design perfectly. Oh, you saw me on YouTube, but you keep missing Tuesday. Well, I'm glad you joined for Tuesday. You made it. You made it and tonight worked out. So this is a good night to join. So here's our first one or this is our second one. This was with watercolor paper. And it's, yeah, it's super cute. I feel like the um, the orange on this is really bright. And I think it's because I used this exact color from the design. So it matches perfectly. So I am a fan of that. This was just, I looked up um, orange and teal or orange and blue watercolor. So this didn't match my design perfectly. But I, I mean, I think the colors are nice. I think it works. But I think if you're going to do it, I think just make some rectangles. This is what I was telling you earlier. If you missed it, where's that paper? This is the paper I used before. This is, you know, it's been pressed like here. So I would just take rectangles, stack them on top of each other and change the colors so that they match your design perfectly and then your tie-dye is going to match your design perfectly which i think would be really nice this one was just watercolor that i just put in orange and blue and i think the colors are nice but it doesn't match exactly like this one does so this is the back this is the front sublimation tie-dye crafty tuesday worked out tonight i'm very very excited I thank you guys for joining because that was fun and I love it when it works out. <laughs> I love when I can show you guys something that I tried for the first time and it's cute. It's not always so cute, but tonight it was. Um, do you guys have any questions about that? Thank you so much for coming. I love Crafty Tuesday. Next week we're doing some DIY wooden keychains. Um, because of this construction, I have been, I normally would just come into my house through my garage and I never used my front door, but now I can't use the garage because there is no garage and I have to use the front door every time I leave the house and I'm losing my keys constantly. I cannot find them. They're at the bottom of my purse somewhere. So I'm making a big keychain, a big wooden keychain so that I can keep track of my keys, but that's what we're doing next week. I think this one is my favorite too, but I think the the process of sublimation tie-dye is definitely a winner. I think you guys should try it, and if you do, uh, show me a picture and tag me because I really want to see it, but I love it. If you guys um, have any questions, just, you know, you can always DM me. I think I'm pretty good about responding. If I don't respond to you, I'm very sorry I missed it, but I, th I think I'm pretty good. <laughs> I usually get back to people pretty quickly. Um, I think that's it. Let's see. Going to watch what I missed on YouTube. Next week sounds so great. I It's going to be great. I think it's going to be fun. We're using some leftover, um, some scraps, HTV vinyl, wood. It's going to be fun. I think it'll be really cute. Um, yeah, and I will post this on YouTube. This will also be um, on my videos, just on my regular Instagram videos. So you can catch me in all the places and see what you missed. But thank you guys for coming. I really appreciate it. Your support means so much to me. I wouldn't be able to be here doing what I love without you guys. So I appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing y'all next week. And until then, stay crafty, my friends. Talk to you later.